role of A in a sinusoidal function. So we know the basic shapes of the sine and cosine graphs. What happens though if we put in a multiplying number, which we are calling A, in front of either our sine or cosine equation? What will that multiplying number do to the graph? Well, let's go to the graphing calculator and we'll investigate. The first thing I'll do is put in the regular sine function. I am in radian mode. Let's go to y equals and type it in. y equals sine x. I'll use that zoom trig, z trig option. And there's my graph of the regular sine function. Remember the z trig option counts by pi over 2 on the x-axis. You can see here's 2 pi, one complete period. And it counts by 1's on the y-axis. Let's now go back to the y equals area and add in 3 sine x. y equals 3 sine x. Let's add that to our graph. And so you can see the blue represents the regular sine function, the one I put in first, and the red one is this second function, y equals 3 times sine x. Well, how has the blue graph changed? It looks like somebody has taken it from the top and bottom and stretched it out, either higher at this point or lower at some of these points. Along the x-axis, everything has stayed the same, but above and below, we have a vertical stretch. Let's talk about some of the features of the graph. Has the amplitude changed? Well, yeah, absolutely. The amplitude, the distance from the midline to the top, in the original function, it's 1. In this new function, you can see it's been stretched all the way up to 3. So the amplitude is now 3. What about the period? Well, this red graph starts to repeat when you get to here. That's the same spot. That's still 2 pi. So the period is unchanged. So first we used a equals 3. Now let's investigate what happens if we use a small number, like 1 half. I'll go back to my y equals area and I'll change out that second equation. I'll clear it out and type in 1 half sine x. And then let's add that to the graph. Okay, so what's happened now? Well, now it looks like somebody took the blue graph and squished it down here and squished it up here. It's been compressed vertically. How about the amplitude? Well, the amplitude used to be 1. It's definitely smaller than 1 now. It looks like it's about half as much. Uh, it's probably 1 half. I could confirm that by using the trace feature. So if I hit trace, notice the cursor is on the blue graph right now. I'll arrow down to the red graph. And then I'll type in pi over 2 and hit enter. And that will take me to that spot. And sure enough, you can see the y value there is 0 0.5, 1 half. So the amplitude is 1 half. Has the period changed? No, once again, the period has remained the same at 2 pi. So it looks like a values larger than 1 lead to a stretch, and a values less than 1 lead to a compress. Now, what if I use a negative number for a? How will that impact the graph? So we'll go back to y equals and enter that last function in. y equals negative 2 sine x, add it to our picture. OK, well now something different has happened. The blue is the original sine function. It looks like the red function has been turned upside down. Somebody took the blue function and all the hills have become valleys and all the valleys have become hills. This thing has been reflected across the x-axis. Not only that, but after it was reflected, it appears to have been stretched out as well, stretched out vertically. I think you can see on here that the new amplitude is now 2. The old one was 1, the new amplitude is 2. The period, once again, has remained unchanged. So it looks like the negative a caused that reflection. Notice that the value of 2, though, since it's bigger than 1, still caused the graph to vertically stretch so that the new amplitude was 2. Well, I think we've done enough investigating now to summarize our results. That a number in front of the equation basically controls two things. First, the sine of a will determine the basic shape we're looking at. If a is positive, then there is no reflection across the x-axis, and so we'll either have our regular sine function or our regular cosine function. We've been calling the regular sine function the hill and the valley. It has middle, high, middle, low, middle. We've been calling the regular cosine shape the vase. 
the regular cosine shape goes high, middle, low, middle, high. Now, if A is negative, then these basic shapes will be reflected across the x-axis. That would give us either the reflected sine shape or the reflected cosine shape. I'll refer to the reflected sine shape as the valley and the hill. And of course this one goes middle, low, middle, high, middle. And I like to call the reflected cosine graph the ghost. Again, you can come up with your own name there. But the reflected cosine function goes low, middle, high, middle, low. These are the four basic shapes of the sine and cosine functions. Make sure you learn these things well. The other thing that A impacts is the amplitude, as we saw. Based on our examples, we know that the value portion of the A tells you the amplitude. The way we write that in math is using those absolute value bars. We're not talking about the positive or negative. We already know what that determines. That has to do with the basic shape. We're talking about just the value portion. Remember the example with negative 2? The value portion of that number is the 2 and that was the amplitude. The other helpful thing to note is that the amplitude didn't change the midline. It simply caused a vertical stretch or compress from the midline. Thanks for watching.